Hi, it's Kitty Wan here, back with the fifth and final episode in the video tutorial series Creating a Memory Match Game with Construct2. In the last episode, we implemented a turn of play, and we now have a fully functional game. Uh, this time, we'll focus on adding a few finishing touches, and then if there's time, I'll show you how to implement the alternate version of the game we discussed in the first episode. So let's go back to Construct2, and make sure uh, before we do any testing that you have toggled the uh, the event that does the shuffling disabled so that you can test the game more more easily then go ahead and click on the layout one and we're going to add some text objects to give the player a better idea of what's going on at the game at any, at any point in time So right click on the layout, insert a new object, and choose a text object. And we'll put it one up here. And we're actually going to need five of t five text objects. So just go ahead and repeat that and put two in the top left corner. Put um, two in the top right corner and then put one in the center and now we'll change the properties of these so starting with the one in the center change its name to txt message And let's make it a little bit taller and wider. And go down to the properties group and change the text to something that just helps us know what this message is all about. So it's just a congratulatory type message. And uh, let's change the fonts. It's going to take a while for these to load because I have a lot of fonts, so bear with me. Uh, change that to, let's, let's say 20, 20 point and make sure it's bold. And change the horizontal alignment to center. All right, that's all we need to do with that one right now. Then this one on the top left, change its name to text matches label and change the text to mat matches and change the font to bold and let's make it nine point and the horizontal alignment also make it centered and then make it a lot smaller so that it kind of snuggles up against that left margin and the next one on the left side we'll call text matches set its default text value to zero and the font to bold point and also uh, horizontally aligned center and reduce it in size then on the ones on the on the right side this first one we'll call text turns label and set the text to turns set the font to Arial bold nine point and the horizontal alignment to center and the last one call it Um, text turns 
set its text default text to zero. The font size, we'll make it bold and 12 point, and horizontal alignment center. Now you can take more time to get these looking better, but that's good enough for right now. Um, now that we've got these on here, we do want to make sure that, in particular, these two against the right margin and the center one will be able to handle a situation where we resize the uh, game window. So in the event sheet, go up to the on start of layout and let's add an action on the text message to set its um, position to be for, for X put it make it open parentheses window width minus self dot width close parentheses divided by two and for the Y make it open parentheses window height minus self dot height close parentheses divided by two. So this will align or will center the text message object both vertically and horizontally. Then let's um, position the text turns object and we want to put it against the right margin so we'll set it to we just need to set the X on it. Set the X to window width minus self dot width. And then copy that and change, uh, click the back button twice and switch the object text object to text turns labels and then click the next button twice and then click done and let's move these um, repositioning actions up to the top just below where the globals are reset All right, so now we've got them positioned correctly, but we haven't tied them in so that they actually say, they actually give the, the uh, player feedback. Let's go back to the global event sheet. We need to add a global variable g turns to store the number of turns, and the initial value is zero. We already have a global var variable for matches so we don't need to create that one. Now go back to the event sheet and the place to uh, add to the number of turns or to, to change the value of turns is where the G count cards picked is equal to 2. There, at that point, we've, we've turned up two cards, so we know that we have a turn. So let's add an action to a system action to add to G turns and we already have one to add to G matches, so we don't need to do that. But we do need on both places to add an action to set the text value. So set text turns equal to, or set the text for it, equal to G turns and do the same thing for G match under G matches set 
text matches text equal to G matches. And then one last thing, go down to the very bottom, add an action to set the text for a text message. And make that equal to quote, you did it in space quote, and then ampersand G turns and another ampersand, and then quote, space, turns, exclamation mark, end quote. And move that text message up so that it happens before the delay. Now there's one other thing. We don't want that text message to be visible. Well, let me show you. If we, if we um, don't do anything, you'll see that when you start the game, you can see that text message. And uh, we don't want that. Uh, while we're at it, though, let's check to see whether our matches and turns are actually being incremented. So click a match, and it increments both matches and turns, which is what we wanted. Click two cards that don't match, and it inc increments just turns. So that seems to be working well. All right, let's go fix the text message. What we want to do is go back to the layout, click on the text message, and then set its initial visibility to invisible. And then back in the event sheet, add an action to set text message visible. And we want to do that either just before or just after we just uh, change the value of the text message text. All right, now when we run it, Now notice that those cards were still up there on the screen after this success message came up. Uh, we need to fix that. So the way to handle that is to introduce another delay. Now we could copy this game reset delay up there, <coughs> but remember that's the one that we want to keep long, make a, it's a longer delay, and we don't need a delay that long. So let's go up and take this card reset delay and place it right before we, sh we show them, well, paste it in and then drag it up to right before the text message is displayed. And while we're at it, let's change this this value of game reset delay to be a little bit shorter. Remember, that's making us wait a really long time. We'll change it to five. Right, test it again. When you're testing it, make sure you don't always do things the same way. Kind of mix them up. Okay, that's better. The delay could be a little bit longer, but it, it is, it's acceptable. We'll leave it as it is right now.